Algebra 1, Chapter 8, Section 1, Measures of Center and Variation. So we are back to our good old friends, mean, median, and mode. We've also got a few other things we're going to throw in there. Uh, some words like range and outliers. And we're going to be finding some, uh, some, some missing values as well. So here we go. Let's take that concept of mean, median, and mode. Let's get a data set. I'm just going to make these up. Um, we're going to uh, pick some smaller numbers and some things that we can deal with. So let's go with 8, 10, 6, 16, 24, 18 and 32. And so the first thing I want to do is arrange the data set in the proper order, and they do need to be arranged in order from least to greatest. So we're going to change that from 6 to 8, 10, 16, 18, 24, and 32. And so again, anytime we have a set of data, we're going to arrange it from in order from least to greatest. So we're going to find three things. We're going to find the mean, the median, and the mode. We're also going to find the range. So the easiest three to do are going to be the median, the mode, and the range. So we're going to go ahead and take care of those um, right now. And then we're going to work on the mean, which will take us just a little bit longer, but not too difficult. So the median is going to be the number in the middle. So if I were to take all of those numbers and count them up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. So I have a perfect number in the middle. I've got three on the outside. I've got three on the outside. So my median is 16. The mode is the number that occurs the most. And so in this case, I don't have any numbers that repeat. So I have no mode on this example. And then my range, I'm just going to take my greatest number and I'm going to subtract my lowest number. Again, range is from greatest to least. And so 32 minus 6, that's going to give us a range of 26. So now, looking at the mean, I'll pull my calculator out here real quick. I'd advise you to do the same as well. And so we're just going to add up all of those numbers together. And that gives us a total of 114. And then we need to divide that by the number of items we have in our data set, which in this case, remember, our number of items is 7. So to find our mean, we're going to take 114 divided by 7. And that comes out to be approximately 16 and 28 hundredths. More than likely, uh, you might be asked to round that. We're going to go ahead and round that to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be approximately 16 and 3 tenths. Again, the little squiggly equal, equal signs will mean approximate. So there's our mean, median, and mode. And we also found the range. Now, let's talk about outliers. Let's say, for example, that I took the age of six people in class. And so we had um, a couple of 13-year-olds. Then we had a 12-year-old. Then we had a 14-year-old in one of my classes. And then we had another 13-year-old. And then I decided to throw mine in there. And I ended up with the 44. So if we put these in order, we would have a 12, three 13s, 
a 14, and a 44. This is what you call an old math teacher. And this is also called an outlier. The outlier means that it's just quite a ways away from um, all of the other information. If you were to take the age, um, maybe if you were to take, let's, let's look at the NBA. I'm a big Thunder fan. Uh, if you took the average height of all of the players on a team and you included their coaches and maybe their equipment managers, you might find some people that were substantially shorter than some of the six and seven foot uh, players. So they would be outliers in that case. So we've talked a little bit about uh, the range in the last one. In this case, the range would be huge because the difference in ages is actually going to be 32 years old once I do the subtraction of the greatest minus the least. And so that would be our range. So an outlier 44 with a range of 32. So now let's look at some unknowns. Let's say I have something that's always popular to us. Kids are always asking us, hey, what would my grade be if I needed to get this score? So let's say that I had, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in order just for time's sake um, so you can get to the work next day in class. Let's say that you had all of these grades and you wanted to average, you wanted a mean. Oh, not sure what happened to my end there, a little bit ugly, but that's okay. Let's say you wanted to average a 93%. That's what you wanted. So what would you have to score on that fifth assignment to get a 93%? This is done pretty easy. If I want a 93%, then I have to average 93 points over five assignments. So if I'm going to average 93 points over five assignments, then I need to have a total of 465 points. Oops, not 456, 465. And so to do that, hey, you're good. So to do that over five spaces, that would give me 93. So now I need to total everything else that I have, my 89, my 90, my 91, and 92, and add those up. So let's get a total there. That gives me a total of 362 points. And so for that, apologize if there was an odd pause there. I was receiving a phone call, so I'm not exactly sure what I ended on. But uh, from the looks of this one, um, you're going to, to make that 93%. You're going to need some extra credit. So we would need 362 points, um, or we have 362 points. We need 465. So if we went with um, subtraction there to see how many points we would need, that would mean we would need to score 103% on that last test if we wanted to average 93%, which is possible. You could have some extra points on there, so um, absolutely doable. So, okay, that is Chapter 8, Section 1, Measures of Center and Variation.